Chris, I wanted to ask you about um, fa fair use uh, and, that, and that kind of stuff. Uh, I know you do a lot of work clearing uh, footage and things for, for narrative films and documentaries. Um, mm -hmm. Can you sort of talk about that? Sure. So fair use, um, there are a lot of myths about fair use, and, and one of them is that they don't apply to narrative films. Um, we work primarily with documentary filmmakers as it applies to fair use, which is really, for, for those who don't know, it's, it's a carve-out in the copyright law. Uh, normally, with the copyright law, you have exclusive rights as the author to control the exploitation of your work. Fair use is a carve out to that so that we can build you know, new works, uh, stand on the shoulders of giants, um, and create new works by taking bits and pieces of other people's work. Um, and it's all about context and criticism and commentary. So if you're, if you're talking about a documentary, um, you're entitled to use bits and pieces of archival footage to illustrate a point that you're making in the film. Um, as it applies to narrative films, uh, these kinds of stories that we're talking about based on, based on a true story or inspired by a true story, um, is, it's the perfect opportunity to take advantage of fair use. Um, all of this being subject to people like Christy agreeing with the fact that it's fair use um, and the insurance companies. That's not me, it's that. <laughs> That's right. Um, and the reason that, that there's the opportunity there is because the First Amendment allows you, very generally, the right to tell a story in the way that you want to tell it. So if you're using archival footage in a way that moves a true story along, if you're only using as much as necessary to illustrate that point, you can get insurance and you can actually use it without permission. Um, and often this is because it's an orphan work. Um, for one example is the, uh, is the film Cesar Chavez, which we worked on, uh, came out a couple years ago. Um, that was based on the life of Cesar Chavez and, and the United Farm Workers. Um, and if you remember that film, there are some clips of uh, farm workers working in, in the California farms from the 50s and 60s. And the producers tried like hell to, to clear the rights for that, but nobody could find out who owned the rights. And they thought it was, this is the only way that we want to make the film, we're not pulling it. Uh, so they called us up and we took a look at it and we found that they were only using as much as necessary to illustrate that point. Uh, the narrator, who is uh, Michael Pena, is talking about working in the fields as you see those clips. Um, and for that reason, we were able to write an opinion letter saying, we think this is fair use, and the insurance companies agreed with us. So we didn't clear those rights. Um, and those situations come up a lot more often than people think, where um, you'd certainly like to clear the rights because uh, they want to do that and because, you know, you want peace of mind. Um, but sometimes you just can't find the copyright holder or different people own different parts of it. It makes it difficult to license. I was going to say, again, your attorney is your best friend because with the fair use situation, there's several insurance companies that actually created a fair use endorsement. Sounds great. Um, but you in order to get the insurance company to include that endorsement on your policy, you have to have your attorney say it's fair use. You can't, you know, and a lot of people like to say, fair use, fair use, it's fair use. Um, and, you know, that you don't get to decide if it's fair use. Your attorneys are the only ones that the insurance company will believe. So, again, make them your friend. So, let me ask, so is the, is the pressure is on the filmmaker, though, always to try to clear rights? So, could you decide as a filmmaker, I don't, I don't want to or need to pay these even if I can find the copyright holder because it is fair use and so I'm not even trying to clear the rights. Yeah, there's, there's no obligation to do it. I mean, I mean, I find, especially with narrative projects, um, just because of the clearance culture that exists, most people come to us because they haven't been able to find the copyright holder or maybe the copyright holder is being unreasonable. Maybe there's an estate involved that just won't give their permission under any circumstances. Um, it's sometimes it's a political issue. Um, but the law is clear that you have no obligation to go out and try to clear it. So we certainly have clients that know about fair use and are, are thinking about it at the, the development stage and have no intent on actually trying to license it. Um, you can even negotiate a license or start negotiating. Um, and while that's a higher risk to an insurance company who knows that you know, the copyright holder knows about this project, they know it's out there, 
um, you can still legally take advantage of fair use. So all of those situations apply. The only place where it's really going to be difficult is where they've denied the use. And at that point, then you have to report that to the E&O insurance company, and it's more than likely that they're not going to be willing to cover it, even if we, they get a letter from, from us.